I will say if it goes beyond Sunday, I'm going to be really frustrated. Yeah. This morning, tens of thousands frustrated still as Texans are waking up in the cold, demanding more transparency from the city. And cleanup is underway across the city. Resources for getting debris out of your neighborhood. And thankfully, warmer temperatures will heat us up on this foggy day. We all sure do need some of that sunshine. I almost forget what it looks like. Good morning. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching KV Weekend Daybreak. I'm Dominique Newland. Meteorologist Grace Thornton is here after a crazy, insane weather week for you. I'm yeah. sorry this had to be your welcome to Texas <laughs> yeah, for weather like, coverage. Growing up in Maryland, I'm kind of used to yeah. the ever-changing weather. But, you know, I've been in Florida for the past two years, so right. I've been kind of uh, you know, you know, it's been nice there. Yeah, <laughs> you've been smooth sailing, but here, sadly, Texas, we ride that roller coaster we do, of unpredictable we do. weather. It is always, always changing, and mm -hmm. it's a little bit cold this morning. There's it some is. fog out there, but I have a promise for you guys. A change is coming for the afternoon. Right now, we are sitting at 39, so last time we checked in on these temperatures, we were at 38, so we are technically warming up just a little bit, and thankfully, we are warming up because our friends up there in New York are very, very cold this morning up towards New Hampshire. A record setting wind chill was set this morning in Mount Washington at negative 108 degree wind chill. I literally cannot even imagine what that feels like. Now, thankfully, I don't have to imagine it because our weather headlines are looking pretty good. It's going to be a foggy morning. We do have that dense fog advisory in effect until 10 a.m. this morning, and then the return of sunshine comes back in this this afternoon. However, or ongoing for the rest of the afternoon or the rest of the weekend, we've got sunshine on tap for Sunday and 70 degree temperatures. It sounds pretty nice. That sounds very nice. Grace, thanks. Cannot wait for that warm up. As we know, thousands of Central Texans, they're preparing for their fourth day without power. And right now, around 76,000 Austin Energy customers still without power, and that's down from about 100,000 last night. Austin, Travis County, Williamson County, and Hayes County have all issued disaster declarations to help with the cleanup. This is video from Travis County Star Flight surveying the damage across Austin yesterday. Energy officials say there's no clear timeline of when power will be up. The biggest concern is still the tens of thousands who remain in the dark and cold this morning. And because of that, the Central Texas Food Bank plans to host two food distribution events today for anyone affected by the outages. The first one happens in South Austin at the Onion Creek Soccer Complex from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. The second one is this afternoon at Nelson Field, just off of 290 and Berkman Drive. That's from 1.30 to 3.30 p.m. Spoiled food is common during power outages. The CDC says you should throw out perishable foods like meat, eggs, and milk if the fridge has been off for more than four hours. Refrigerated food should be kept at 40 degrees or cooler, so when in doubt, just throw it out. The Central Texas Food Bank is also asking for volunteers and donations while the city recovers from the ice storm. You can find out more info on our website. During a news conference last night, Austin Energy officials told us trees keep breaking and causing more problems, and that's why outage numbers are coming down slowly. The trees are compromised, and so there are instances where we're continuing to see that impact um, our, our customers and create more outages. And so it's still, you know, two step, maybe now it's three steps forward and two steps back. Before it was two steps forward and three or four steps back. Um, so things are improving. They're stressing the importance of staying away from downed power lines. If you see one, you can call 311 to report it. The City of Austin's Development Services Department also says it's adjusting permits and inspections so that property owners can start immediately on emergency repairs. And the city will send out teams later to retroactive inspections. And if you have debris to get rid of, Austin Resource Recovery customers can call 311 for curbside pickup. The Austin Disaster Relief Network is also helping people in need with cleanup. For more information about that or drop off locations in other Central Texas cities, we posted more information on our website at KVU.com. 
And we sure know we have a long road ahead of us when it comes to cleanup. Just take a look at some of these photos. Austin Parks and Rec tweeted. They have 20,000 acres of parkland to take care of and just eight staff members in their forestry unit, plus three inspectors and two supervisors. So it may be a while before our parks look normal again. An independent living facility in Dripping Springs was left without power all day yesterday, leaving many Central Texas seniors frightened for their safety. They told KVU's Isabella Basco they felt pushed aside when they should be a priority. We were just being overlooked because we're old and we're not assisted living. We're independent living, but we still need a certain amount of care. It was dark, it was cold. Residents at Ledgestone Independent Living in Dripping Springs are social. Thank you. you can give them any excuse to have a happy hour. It's quite the change from Thursday. From 10 a.m. to about midnight, the power went out. We have a lot of people here who are incapacitated. We have people in bed and being cared for by others. For a whole day, they were left with pitch black hallways. It was a dangerous thing for people to try to walk down the halls. And an incessant alarm system. And it was going off all day long, off and on and off and on. Overnight, but some of us don't have anyone. We in couldn't there. get a hold of anybody that, that was going to help us out. And we just felt we're not a priority. Any other facility. How long is it going to be like this? For residents like D. Carp, it's a frustrating feeling. We want our voices heard when we have problems. We got a couple of hundred people here who this ought to be a relatively high priority facility for someone to check on. All they are asking for. Somebody should have recognized that this was a place that if they had a temporary generator, they could have come in and at least give us the light. Somebody ought to recognize that every now and then we're going to have an ice storm. They say surviving through that required a lifeboat mentality. We're still viable people, and we just want to be treated as such. Ultimately, Ledgestone residents feel that local staff did everything they could to assist them, but they also stress they never want to live through another situation like this again. In Dripping Springs, Isabella Basco. Ledgestone gets its power from PEC. In a statement, that utility told us it can't guarantee uninterrupted power. And it's encouraging customers, especially those with medical needs, to have an emergency plan that includes another way to access power just in case. Yesterday, Austin Mayor Kirk Watson apologized to Austin Knights for the power crisis in the city. City leaders say they couldn't declare emergency declaration sooner because they didn't know how much all the damage around the area would cost. But I want to say again, the city let its citizens down. The situation is unacceptable to the community and it's unacceptable to me. And I'm sorry. A county must face more than $1 million in damages to declare a local disaster. Those declarations make federal funds available on the local level to go toward recovery efforts. And we will soon get more information from Austin leaders this afternoon at 3 p.m. Mayor Kirk Watson and Austin Energy leaders will be answering questions about the status of the outages and debris. We, of course, will have that for you live here on KVU later this afternoon. And after months of chaos at the Dallas Zoo, police have a man in custody. They say kidnapped monkeys and mess with their leopard. According to police sources, once Dallas police got him talking, he wouldn't stop. And an Austin police officer is no longer charged with assault after the 2020 protests. The new evidence that changed the DA's case.